Hey everyone, Brandon here again for another video. So I've been reading the book Seeing That Freeze by Rob Berbea a lot lately. I'm about 200 pages in. And uh, I've spent really kind of the bulk of my day reading this book and simultaneously doing the practices that are talked about in the book. So rather than like doing the practice and then doing like a meditation sit on the practices discussed, I mean, I've been finding it really uh, powerful and enjoyable to actually read while doing the practice. Now this takes a little bit of sophistication when it comes to like metacognitive awareness, being able to deal with like a bunch of shit at once, we might say is a simple way of saying that. Um, but this book is just badass, I must say. When it comes to developing insight further, for me it's like I'm 200 pages in on this book and I'm not really sure if I've gotten to any brand new insight. But what I have gotten is a deepening in the subtlety of various insights that I've already, at least the majority of them, have already worked with in the past. It's just, this is like kind of, this book is really good if you've had a lot of these types of insights, especially more aligned with the Buddhist uh, path, or maybe even you might say a modern Buddhist path. Um, and of course, when I say Buddhist path, I don't mean um, listening to Alan Watts and thinking you know what Buddhism is. <laughs> that's that's not quite what I mean. I mean more like um, you know people like Daniel Ingram understanding his stuff, like Frank Yang understanding his stuff, um, and plenty of others, um, people who are more traditional with their Buddhist teachings, even going to the suttas and being familiar with those, uh, all of that kind of stuff. Um, the more, like, deeper side of Buddhism, if you're familiar with that, or even if you want to become familiar with that, this book is quite amazing for that specific type of practice. And like one thing I was doing today, so I read like the chapters on the three characteristics, or I at least finished uh, the, the last of those chapters today. I might have started the uh, Anicca practice uh, chapter a couple days ago, but anyway, uh, so I was doing those practices, and then I got to uh, doing the practice where it's on uh, this, like, basically very spacious awareness, and as I'm reading this book and doing the practices while reading, uh, I've just noticed, like, this has been almost like taking, like, 10 different psychedelics in a day. And one of the thoughts I had before I started recording this video was when I first started getting deeper into spirituality and I was talking to my first meditation teacher and I was telling him about how I was so inspired by like the actualize.org Leo Gura way of doing things using psychedelics, namely as a way to develop myself spiritually. He told me, my first meditation teacher, he told me, psychedelics can show the way to the path, but they are not the path. And today was just a really good example of first-hand evidence to myself that my first meditation teacher really knew what he was talking about when he said that. And maybe he didn't understand or have the exact insights that Leo Gura did. Maybe Leo or me or other people using those 
tools, saw into certain things that maybe he hadn't. That's not the point. The point is that really what it comes down to in a lot of ways with spiritual practice, as far as I'm concerned, is seeing the structural components of experience in a way that is accessible uh, more to the mind when it's not even empowered by a psychedelic. And there's a reason why this is so important. Because if you're always relying on a psychedelic, you're eventually going to be limited by that tool. The psychedelic has certain limits, in a sense. As much as, much as psychedelics can open up to a seemingly limitless thing, they are ultimately just a chemical. And they are ultimately just a or or just a small set of possible chemicals to produce certain effects in the brain that change the way that the mind functions. But what I see is really the more sophisticated spiritual practice out there that's been out there at probably at least as long as psychedelics have been used or at least very long thousands of years, is, is this kind of, kind of subtle practice with uh, what experience can do on its own uh, sort of power. You realize with enough sophisticated practice that everything is fabricated by the mind, and your mind has the capability to change experience like a psychedelic can, at least as intense as a psychedelic can. And sure, people have even been able to basically create hallucinations, like visually, audibly, stuff like that with their own awareness power. Um, you know, that's that's a documented thing. It happens. But I'm, I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about just like... If you turn your mode of perception, if you learn to have control over that, you can go into levels of intensity of insight producing experiences that will be on par with a psychedelic trip. That will be on par with a heroic dose psychedelic trip. And rather than you succumbing to the effects of a substance and it sort of taking you on a ride, tugging you, pulling you around wherever it wants you to go, you become the controller actually as someone who already, as an experience that directly knows the very fabricated nature of its own illusory mechanism of control, with all that going on, it well very well knows that it is fabricated. The whole, the whole sense of self knows that it's fabricated. The whole will knows that it's fabricated. All of the ways of seeing know that they're fabricated and in many ways and to many degrees know how they are fabricated. And it still can have this sort of weird power to control itself in an uncontrollable way to its own will that is non-existent and there's not even an it to be discussed. That's a fucking strange and awesome place to be. Um, more than strange, I would just say rare. It's a rare place to be, in a sense. Uh, at least uh, in human affairs. You don't see or hear of many people that can do this. Uh, or at least I would say <laughs> more than 99% of spiritual practitioners cannot do this type of shit. It's pretty fucking awesome. And it does take a lot of requirements. I'll just say it's not a practice like the, to the degrees that I'm talking about here. This is not a practice that can be done just off the gate. Like you can't do this your first meditation sitting. You can't probably do this after your first like two or three years of serious meditation. You might not even be able to do this type of stuff I'm talking about, depending on your interest levels and maybe your quote-unquote talent for this type of stuff. You might not even be able to do this like 10 years into meditation. 
maybe even longer after that. I'm sure there are people who have meditated decades that have not been able to do the type of stuff I'm trying to describe here. And I'm not at all the only person who's been able to do this stuff. It's very well understood in certain circles that this shit is possible. This shit's actually rather attainable if you want to get into it and you know that you can. It's a big thing with spiritual progress is a lot of the time one of the biggest limiting factors is just simply that people believe that things are so difficult to get. Sorry, my cat's attacking my microphone right now. Um, The thing is, People get this idea in their heads that things are so unattainable because they're so rare and they're so awesome that therefore I can't get it. That's just, I mean, at least to me, that's a horrible way of looking at things because at least for me, I've attained a lot of things that are very rare and uh, pretty damn awesome when it comes to experience and how to augment it, change it, flip it upside down and you know, cook it to the, you know, degree you want it cooked or whatever, (laughs) so to speak. It's pretty crazy. So, um, I don't know, this video is kind of sharing a little bit more of like just a loose vlog format, but I'm just like, this is awesome doing this type of practice. Like I really highly rate and suggest this book to any of you guys watching this who have been into spiritual practice for years. And even if you've read it before, I would say you have to be at a certain level of insight already before you can get much out of this book. I could very easily see myself five years ago, two years ago, even one year ago, even six months ago, reading this book and getting so much less out of it than I am now. So that is like a small like side note. If you do read this book and you're expecting it to be like reading, or yeah, literally like reading ten psychedelics in a day, <laughs> no, but uh, like like experiencing the effects of ten different psychedelics in a day, you probably need to be coming at the experience when you start with a pretty high level of bulletproof insight first. And if that applies to you, then you're going to get a lot of value out of this book because it really just dives deeper into the subtleties and ways you can manipulate these different little thought trains. Any insight as a way of looking is like a little more than just thought. It's a perceptual train that's usually augmented by some sort of linguistic thought. So you have like anatta, or not-self, or the non-substantiality of the self. That insight, right? People think that's one insight. No, it's like a million different little, subtle, tiny fluctuations of insight that could be found within that one main... Like, let's say that's like like a giant direction, like east... Anatta is like east. There are so many different ways and pathways and and tunnels and you know place ways you could fly by plane to go east to go to Anatta. There's so much there. And this is really where it gets hilarious to me. Like people like Leo Guru criticizing Buddhism, saying that he understands it. No man, trust me, it would take an entire lifetime to get a tenth of Buddhism understood. I'm very confident in that now because I've actually seen the depth, seeing it on a daily basis more and more deeper and deeper just by the sober conscious mind alone. But you can combine this with the psychedelic path too. You can use psychedelics occasionally. Really, I would suggest like using a very light dose. I mean, for me, I use a legal form, like federally and state legal form of THC is the only substance, mind-altering substance that I ever use in any sort of a spiritual practice these days. And just that, like just a little, little fuel to, to 
to to loosen up the mind and and give that extra power to potentially to a way of looking sometimes you can get so lost in the potency of the substance if you're sensitive enough just a small dose of a very light substance like thc can catapult you in a direction where you'll be so in love with it that it'll be hard to even navigate the experience so I really wouldn't suggest like combining really strong psychedelics with these types of practices unless your insight is just piss poor and it sucks and you can't transform experience on your own or you can't transform it with THC or something lighter, then maybe you could try something a little bit more hardcore when it comes to substance um, to maybe give you a little boost in a certain direction. Unfortunately, that might be what most people need to even see anywhere near the depths that I'm trying to talk about here. Uh, just realistically speaking, just thinking about it, I know where I used to be at. I know the things I used to have to do to get to powerful states. And uh, there were certainly times where that statement I just made about, yeah, maybe some people need really strong psychedelics to get any taste of an insight like what I'm trying to describe that you could do on your own sober mind's power. Like, I used to be in that boat where I used to... I, I, there were times where I took gigantic doses of psychedelics and got to less insightful and powerful states of consciousness than I've been in today, like all day long, in a very quote-unquote controlled and very safe way just sitting in my house reading a book it's hilarious it doesn't make any sense to a degree like it's just hilarious how accessible the mind's power actually is once it gets unlocked it's like oh wow wow holy shit this is too good to be true in a sense and the fact is man I am 26, about to turn 27 years old in a couple weeks. And let's just say I live a normal human lifespan for someone in my demographic. Maybe that's anywhere from 60 to 80-ish years old. If I have another roughly 50 years to do these types of practice, I cannot at all imagine what my direct moment-to-moment, -moment, not even in practice, experience will be like. I cannot imagine where this is going. And this, can, this circles back to one of the themes of my teachings that I've been trying to put on YouTube for a while now. When I've uploaded videos more in the direction of someone like sharing insights or being a little bit of a teacher, I have been saying for a while now that nobody is prepared for where experience can go. Not a single person is prepared. And I guess with that circling back to a previous theme, I will just say uh, feel free, go check out my older videos if you want to see more about what I'm talking about here. This is an evolving spiritual practice as I go on. For a while, I was thinking I was like done or things were as far as they were going to go in certain directions. And in many ways, I was kind of right in like a little bit. But really, the, the truth is it just goes on. It just gets deeper. And um, I really have no idea how much deeper this can go. But the, all the signs point to it going infinitely deeper. All the credible signs that I have to look at right now, like that make sense when it comes to experience, they all point that there is no limit to this. This is going on deeper and deeper, potentially it could. So anyway, stay tuned for more content talking about the wild west of consciousness that I'm out here exploring these days. Sober for the most part, on just a tiny bit of THC occasionally, legal THC, both federally and state legal for me. Um, so yeah, it's a fun time and I hope to see you guys in more videos. Thanks for watching.